Energy transition. What does that mean to you? For most people, it's the idea of stop using one form of energy and getting off of that form of energy and onto another form of energy. In fact, if you listen to the media, if you watch TV, if you get on social media, if you listen to the pundits, or if you listen to the politicians, you'll hear lots about energy transition. So much so that we've just about convinced our young people and convinced our society that energy transition is not only inevitable, but it's immediate. It's about to happen right here, right now, in any moment. The headlines are all over the place. California is going to be all electric vehicles by 2035. Kansas produces more than 50% of its electricity by utilizing wind energy. All over the place, whether you're talking about the TV, whether you're talking about social media, the commentators, or the politicians, people are talking about energy transition. What is it that we're actually talking about? Because we talk about it so much that when I go into a room and I talk to people about the oil and gas industry and I talk to them about wind and solar power, the way that I'll start out is I'll ask a question. How many of you think we're this close to flipping the switch and getting off of fossil fuels and onto renewable sources of energy? Hands will go up across the room. So then I'll ask them a follow-up question. I'll say, how much energy right now in the world do you think comes from wind and solar? The general answer that I get is 65 to 85 percent of energy in the world coming from wind and solar. The actual number is two. Two percent of energy right now comes from wind and solar. Over 80% of energy comes from fossil fuels. 56% of energy comes from oil and natural gas alone. Let's compare it to, say, firewood. Most of us don't even think about firewood being an energy source. However, almost 40% of the population of the world today still depends on firewood for the heating of their homes, cooking of their meals, or both, predominantly in Asia and Africa. They're utilizing firewood for those purposes. Firewood today accounts for about 6% of energy production. In other words, if you took all of the windmills, all of the solar panels, and you multiplied them threefold, you put up three times as many wind turbines, you put up three times as many solar panels, wind and solar would almost catch up with firewood as a source of energy in the world. That's how far we are away from flipping the switch. Right now, over 80% of our energy is provided by fossil fuels. 56% of our energy alone is provided by oil and gas. But it's important that we have real conversations about energy right now, especially with their young people. Because right now, one of the biggest hurdles that the oil and gas industry faces is getting people to come into the industry and take positions and jobs within the industry. And it's vital that we fill those roles when 56% of the energy in the world comes from that industry. Oil and natural gas is a significant part of our lives. And the fact of the matter is, is that people all over the world are desperate for energy. In fact, the International Energy Agency predicts that by the year 2050, it will take 28% more energy than we currently have to be able to supply our needs. Energy demand is going to increase by 28%. What we should be talking about now is not so much energy transition we're at this point. What we should be talking about is how in the world are we going to be able to produce 28% more energy by the year 2050 than we currently produce today. And we need that energy for two reasons. One, there's a tremendous number of people out there that are looking to get their hands on more energy. I spent two years in Pakistan. And uh, Pakistan is a very energy deprived country. And so one of the things that I would do every morning is there's very little refrigeration. I'd get up and we'd go down to the market and we'd pick out the chickens and the goat that we wanted to eat that day. And the butcher would start butchering them right there because you consumed the meat that you were gonna utilize that day. While the butcher was butchering them, I'd go down to the ice house and I'd pick out an ice block that was gonna be the ice that we'd use that day. We'd load that, uh, wrap it up in burlap, load that ice block up onto a cart, and then we'd begin following this cart being pulled by a water buffalo back across town to go pick up our meat so that we could start our day. 
As we were pulling this cart, there would be all these kids waiting for that water buffalo to defecate on the ground. As soon as it defecated on the ground and pooped on the ground, these kids would run to the side of the road, pick up grass, go mix it with the buffalo patty, and begin mixing it together while they walked home. Then they would slap that buffalo patty on the south side of their house. They would leave it there to dry in the sun till it started to peel off, and then they would take it inside, and that was what they would use to cook their meals on, to heat their home with. That's their energy source. Those kids have absolutely no chance whatsoever to compete with my kids and my grandkids who are in school learning how to read, write, how to do arithmetic, they uh, learning how to utilize technology because they are spending their time out collecting energy for their family. Another reason that energy is going to grow by 28% by the year 2050 is because between now and then, we're going to add over a billion people, that's billion with a B, billion people to the world. Energy increases when people increase. But the reality is, is yes, renewables are growing. Yes, they are taking on more of the market share. But a lot of times we get lost in that argument. We get lost in the statistics of those market shares. And we, and we miss what has actually happened. Because while renewables are increasing, so are oil and natural gas. But all you hear about is the market share. All you hear about is how much of the market share uh, renewables have increased. Well, I love what Mark Twain said. He said, there are lies, damn lies, and statistics. And there's a lot of truth to that because market share doesn't always share the story. Let me give you an example. Let's say that we're in a neighborhood that has 10 families that are living in this neighborhood. All of them have an internal combustion engine car. They have a gasoline or diesel powered car. But the Joneses decide one day that they want to go trade their car in and get an electric vehicle. So they go trade theirs in, get an electric vehicle. You still have 10 cars, but now one of them is an electric vehicle. The electric vehicle percentage has increased by 10% in that neighborhood. But the Smiths that live next door, husband and wife, they work at different places across town from each other. So they pick up a second vehicle so they can each go to their own workplaces. So they add a vehicle. So now there's 11 cars and one of them is electric. But the Gonzaleses that live down the road, they have a daughter that's go growing up and she's about to graduate high school. She needs a vehicle to get to school and especially get off to college. So they also pick up a second car. So now in the neighborhood, you have 12 cars and one of them is electric. Well, according to the statistics, the electric market has increased from zero to eight percent in that neighborhood. However, the reality is, is there is actually one more internal combustion engine car, gasoline powered car than there was before. The market expanded. Yes, electric vehicle took part, a share of that market, but the market expanded to where there's actually more gasoline powered cars in that neighborhood. Does that make sense? The EIA, the Energy Information Administration, actually just came out with a report. And that report showed that by the year 2035, they predict the electric vehicles will increase from single digits now to 13% of the market in 2035. However, the kicker in the report is, at that point in time, they also predict that there will be more internal combustion engine cars on the road than there are right now. Everywhere you look, the market is expanding. And yes, renewables are expanding, but so are oil and natural gas. And they're actually expanding to produce more energy than renewables. So it is vital that we have a real conversation about energy, that we have a real conversation about what it is we are doing, how we are getting there, and how we are going to move forward. Why? Because it's valuable to Kansas. It is valuable to Kansas. Right now in Kansas, 11,414 people work in the oil industry. The oil industry is responsible for over 100,000 jobs that are dependent upon the industry here in Kansas. Every year, over $3 billion in annual family income are paid out to families working in the industry. $1.4 billion goes into state and local taxes. Oil and gas is a vital part of the Kansas economy. We're the 11th ranked state in the country in producing oil, 15th ranked state in the country in producing gas. It is a vital part of our 
economy. It's a vital part of our state. And it's vital that we continue to communicate to our young people the opportunities that are lay ahead in our industry. Because the biggest challenge that the industry faces at this point is jobs. Talking to our young people about the fact that the oil and gas industry is going to be around, that 56% of energy in the world comes from oil and gas. By the year 2050, I go into schools all the time and I say, by the time you're my age, and that's old, and those kids say, yeah, that's old, but by the time you're my age, the oil and natural gas will still be over 50% of energy in the world. There is a long career opportunity that is available for you here in the oil and gas industry. And in the industry, we need those young minds. We need those brilliant minds to come into the industry so we can realize the most effective, efficient, and environmentally friendly way possible to utilize this resource. Why? Because we have to increase our energy by 28% to meet the energy demand by 20 50. We're going to need every available source of energy that we can find. We are going to need every available source of energy that we can possibly find. It is vital. That is the real conversation that we need to be having. But it's more than just energy. Oil and natural gas is the only energy source that also produces byproducts that have increased the value of our lives have increased our lifestyle. Oil and natural gas provides over 6,000 raw materials that are utilized to produce over millions of products every single day that we depend on. Those products are uh, products like that we use in medical supplies. The vast majority of medicines utilize petroleum byproducts in their production. If you go into any ER, you will see 13, the top 13 pieces of machinery that are used in the ER are predominantly made from petroleum. It is a vital part of our world in a variety of ways. Go and look at technology. Over 60% of the average cell phone is made from petroleum products. That over 65% of an average computer is made from petroleum products. Go buy you an electric car, over 70% of the parts of an electric car are made from petroleum byproducts. It has literally created the world in which we live, and it is a great world. In fact, climate-related deaths are at the lowest point that they have ever been. Infant uh, deaths are at the lowest point that they've ever been. Gross domestic product, individual prosperity and wealth are at the highest points in human history. Longevity of life, we're at the highest point in recent years that we've ever been at any point in history. And all of that follows the correlation between the development of oil and natural gas and the products that are derived from it that enable us to live the lifestyle in which we live. So it is more than just energy. It is about the life we live. And that is part of that real conversation. Why? Because the world is going to continue to need oil and gas. The world is going to continue to rely on oil and gas for many decades to come. And that is why it's important for us to begin to have a real conversation about energy. Because here's the fact. The United States does a better job than any other nation on earth in developing, producing, and utilizing oil and natural gas. We do it in a more environmentally conscious way than any other nation on earth. We do a better job than any other nation on earth. And here in Kansas, the vast majority, over 90% of the producers in Kansas are small independent producers. They're producers that predominantly live in the communities that you live in, that work in the communities that you work in. They go to the churches that you go to. They go to the restaurants that you go to. They drink the water that you drink. They hunt in the fields that you hunt in. And they care about the environment around them. They care about how the Kansas environment is impacted. We do a better job than anyone else. Oil and natural gas will continue to be a part of our lives for a long time to come. We want to produce that resource here because that is what keeps America strong and that is what keeps Kansas strong. 
Thank you.